Hello everybody, Jimmy is Promo here back again with another awesome video. And in today's video, we will be talking about the top five hidden features for the Samsung Galaxy S9 and the S9 Plus. But also stay tuned to the very end of this video. I will be going through some comments and questions from the past couple days to get these answered for you guys. So if you are interested and if you do watch the full video, you will be getting to the end point where I do answer these questions for you. But if you don't need to go to the very end to learn all of these top five hidden features, there will be a timestamp that will be pinned underneath the comment section. You can click that and it'll take you directly over to where I answer your questions. Now, if you are brand new here at the channel of Jimmy's Promo and you own a Samsung Galaxy device, don't forget to hit on that subscribe button as well as the bell for notifications so you get notified for future videos. And don't forget about that playlist tab on the very top to check out everything I've made so far for the Galaxy S9 and the S9 Plus. So kicking this off, we're gonna first talk about what happens when you get a notification on the Galaxy S9 and the S9 Plus. Originally, if you have your edge lighting turned off, it's gonna be something that is just extremely ugly. It's a huge banner. It goes all the way across the whole entire screen and it just does not look fun at all. So now I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you have your edge lighting turned on. Now, the reason why I wanna show you this is because when you have edge lighting that is selected and you went through all your different settings and you have it turned it on, edge lighting is just a way to notify you of a notification. So you'd be able to have that light that goes all the way around the phone, but you're also able to get a different type of a pop-up, something that's less intrusive, but you're able to do something different that not many people tell you about. Now, once you get this little notification comes through and you see those little words on the very top, that small banner, when you click on it and basically slide down so once you swipe it down on that little banner you're going to pop up this little pop-up window here so what you're able to do with this one is you'd be able to minimize it you'd also be able to hit that middle button and make it expanded or you'd be able to get out of it totally now let's just say that you wanted to see exactly what happens when you get another notification and exactly what happened but what also happens when you respond and hit the home button so what i'm going to do is i'm going to swipe it down now i'm going to go right back over in there i'm going to say hi i'm going to send it right on back and i hit my home button so so what's going to happen is now it is completely minimized as if it's a small little pop-up window. And when you're completely done with this, then you're able to just hit on the little X and then you're completely done. Feature number two is dealing with the home screen. So what you're able to do is once you press anywhere on the home screen that is empty, just press and hold on there. You're going to go down here where it says the home screen settings and you want to see this little option right here. So this portrait mode only, once you turn this thing off, what's going to happen is now you're able to use your home screen in the landscape form. So you'd either have it portrait or horizontal horizontal, it doesn't matter. Let's just say that you head over into YouTube and you're playing with YouTube, you're watching all the different videos. And then once you get on out, you wanna go over into a different application. Now you will be able to, without having to always rotate your phone, you know, putting it portrait and then horizontal, portrait, horizontal, and everything else. So again, all you wanna do is go inside your settings because by default, this one is turned on where it is locked in portrait. Just make sure you turn this thing off. And then at any point in time when your phone is sideways, you're able to use it that way as well. Very similar to a tablet. Now, because feature number two is one of those that's just a little bit more commonly known, I'm gonna throw an additional one inside of there. So you're actually gonna see six hidden features instead of five. And this one I'm gonna throw in there because it's referred to as the easy screen turn on. And all you have to do is just wave your hand over that proximity sensor on the very top of the Galaxy S9 and the S9 Plus, and it's able to turn this on. So let me show you how you'd be able to activate this. So to turn this on, you wanna pull down the notifications panel, click on the settings icon. You're gonna scroll down to where it says accessibility. Underneath the accessibility, it's gonna be the third one down, which is dexterity and interaction because you're pretty much interacting with your phone. And it's gonna be this one right here that's referred to as easy screen turn on. Once you have this thing turned on, any point in time that you want to activate your little lock screen to see what's going on, just give it a little wave above that proximity sensor. Now you're able to see what is going on, maybe who a text message is from. Now, when this comes into play is maybe your hands are dirty, you're doing the dishes, maybe you're cooking, maybe you've touched uh, chicken, maybe you're working on a vehicle, you have grease or oil everywhere and you don't want to touch your home button or power button just give a small little wave and then now it's able to open up that lock screen for you so the next hidden feature is by playing with the gallery so i know a few people when they go through their phone and they want to delete images or move images they would press and hold on the original image and then they would go through and you know individually select all these images but just by tapping on the screen but all you would really have to do if you wanted to either move or delete these things in bulk is by again pressing and holding on the very first image but now just kind of give a small little swipe. So now all I'm doing is just swiping all these images and then now I'm able to delete them extremely fast. I do wanna mention that if you try to go down or go up, it's not gonna happen because it's just thinking that you're scrolling the screen. All you'd have to do is just go through there, just kind of give a little wipe through all those different images you want to delete and then you are good to go. So these ones are ones I do wanna delete. Hit delete, boom, now we are good to go. 
Hidden feature number four is definitely gonna come into play if you get yourself a screen protector and it's not that sensitive. So let's kind of go through and here is a screen protector here. Um, I'm not even going to go down and try to get this thing adhered onto the device. I'm just gonna kind of have it sitting here and what I'm trying to do, I'm gonna hold this little tape on the very top but I'm gonna try to interact with the phone. So right now I'm pressing just a little bit harder to try to get it to activate with me. Um, but you can see that it's not really activating or working. So now what I do really need to do is move the screen protector. I'm gonna go over into settings and then underneath settings, what you wanna do is go down to your advanced features. Underneath advanced features, go to the very last one that is called touch sensitivity. And once you have your touch sensitivity that is turned on, now I'm gonna hit on my little home button here. And then now just without trying to push really hard, I'm able to go through and you can see that it's interacting just a lot easier. So I'm able to go left and right, back and forth, go through everything, go up and down, and now it's able to work. And the great thing about this one is that it's not even adhered to my phone at all. So it's definitely not even, you know, to the phone that would give it its sensitivity. It's not being adhered down. And so even when I was kind of moving this around right here, you can see that it's still interacting. Now, if I was to go right on back and go through here, let's go over into that advanced features. Let's turn off the touch sensitivity. One more time, if I was to kind of go through it, you can see that it's not really interacting at all. And I'm actually giving it the exact same pressure as before. Now finishing off part one of the top five hidden features of the Samsung Galaxy S9 and the S9 Plus, it's gonna be dealing with this little edge panel handle. Now what you are able to do on the Samsung Galaxy S9 and the S9 Plus that you were not able to do with the Galaxy S8, S8 Plus, or Note 8 was move this around and you can either put it on the left or right hand side. Now on the other phones, what you had to do for the year of 2017, you would have to basically open up your edge panel, click on these settings, head to the very top right hand side, click on the edge panel handle. This is where you can either make it smaller or larger, the transparency, you can have vibration if it's you know being operated and used. And then this is also where you'd be able to change it on the left or right, or you'd be able to bring it up and down. So it just makes it super easy if you wanted to kind of just move this thing really fast for maybe a gameplay, um, or maybe somebody else is using your phone and they are left-handed, you'd be able to move it either on the left or right hand side. You'd be able to move it if you want it on the top or bottom. So now how about we go through some of your comments and questions. Let's get some of these things answered. And I'm not filtering this. I'm not grabbing it from a particular video. Really just kind of going through the application of YouTube, checking out what was the most recent questions or comments, and I'll be able to respond back to you guys. Uh, if you guys do have comments or questions, make sure you guys write that below this video. I'll respond back to you um, if I'm able to, as well as possibly showing you in one of these end videos. So let's, let's pop over into it. And so the first one over here is for the Galaxy Note 9, and it was one that I made for the change these 15 settings right away. And it says, Jimmy, I discovered a really cool feature on the Note 9. You may or may not know about this uh, feature. It's within the stock messaging of the keyboard. So if you go inside of the settings, basically it's talking about the high contrast and you can click on high contrast. So now to go over what this comment over here is talking about, you don't have to go inside of the Samsung messaging application. This is actually the Android messages. It's really built with inside of the Samsung keyboard. So if you check out your Samsung keyboard over here, you might also have Gboard, but when you're inside of the Samsung keyboard, you hit on that settings icon this is where you can go underneath and go to that keyboard layout and feedback. And then inside of there, you can actually turn on the high contrast keyboard. So as of right now, this is what it looks like. And when you turn this one on, it'll look like this. And you can actually go through and change how that high contrast will look even with those key letters. Now let's head down to another one. And so this is pretty much within the side of the same video that we talked about from before. But somebody asked me, what case is this please? And so for the Galaxy Note 9, just so you guys know, I am using a Tech 21 case and this is the clear one. Uh, and so this one is actually not on Amazon, but I will put a link below the video taking you over to the Tech 21 website. And then for the Galaxy S9 Plus, the one I'm using over here is Gear 4. And so I love this one here too. It has a high drop rate. Uh, so I am able to actually drop it from a pretty high level. I believe it's about 14 feet. So both of these are really good drop ratings if you're looking at 12 to 14 feet. Something that's pretty much um, kind of slim and thin, nothing too bulky, but it's able to take any type of a drop. Now let's go down just a little bit more, and this is for a video that I talked about for the Whitestone Dome Glass, which is literally the only screen protection I'll use on my Samsung Galaxy devices. And so someone wrote a comment stating, forget these overpriced crappy protectors. I carry mine bare, it's Gorilla Glass for God's sake. Just don't put it in the same pocket as your keys and insure the phone. So the one thing I do wanna mention about this comment here is that 
Obviously, this person has never dropped a phone on accident and maybe even on purpose, but I do have to say 100%, the Whitestone Dome Glasser, if you want to use any other screen, you know, screen protection if you want to, they definitely do protect your phone. When it actually comes down to looking at one of my other phones, um, not the Galaxy S9 Plus or the Note 9 because they have screen protection on them, but my other phone actually has micro scratches everywhere all over the screen that is from you know dust buildup and me using my finger and the dust wiping across the screen. So all those micro scratches that's on that phone would have not been there if I would have had a, a Whitestone dome glass on there or another glass screen protector. Now, when it also comes down to drops, uh, so I've dropped my phone quite a few times actually, and one of them completely on accident, I had the Whitestone dome glass on there. It hit the cement. It completely shattered the glass. Um, and then when I took it off, my phone was perfectly fine. If that screen protector was not there, my phone would have also been broken. So somebody talking about, you know, not using the screen protection and just going off and having it bare and, and rawhide of just the glass and the phone itself. You can if you want to. Um, but for me, I've dropped my phone before. The glass has saved me a ton of money because even though these things are maybe 50 or $60, you're saving yourself a $900 to $1,000 phone. So yes, definitely put on a screen protector. And again, if you guys are interested in the best screen protection for the Galaxy Note 9 or the S9, S9 Plus, my biggest recommendation is the Whitestone Dome Glass, which I will place a link for that below this video as well. So as we're going through, I see another one for the custom text tones are back. So this was an older video where pretty much the custom ringtones or text message tones came away and then they got came back. Um, and right here, this says, I want to know how to set a custom tone in general, not for individuals. So now how about we head over into the Samsung messaging app again, and I'll show you the general way of setting up a normal text tone. So what you'll do is you open up the Samsung messaging application. On the very top right hand side, you will see three little dots that gives you more options and you'll go down and click on settings. Inside of here, you'll click on notifications and then underneath notifications, you'll go down to where it says the general notifications right here. Once you click on that, this is where it says sound. Once you click on sound, this will be the normal general sound that'll come with anybody sending you a text message, except for the ones that you have set up individually. So now let's talk about the very last question and I'll end on this one, which is talking about the Bixby key. So this one came from the Galaxy Note 9 video where I talked about the Bixby key was updated, also how to remap and disable the Bixby key. But because you know the Galaxy S9, S9 Plus and the Note 9 has Bixby, this is what we'll talk about it. The question was, yeah, but WTF is it? Bixby, who makes these names up? Well, to answer the question, Samsung made up the name Bixby and Bixby is a artificial intelligence. And really what the artificial intelligence of Bixby is, is that it's a way that you can give your phone commands, not really ask it questions. So when you, when you think of Google and Siri, you're asking questions like, what time is it? Um, can you add this to my calendar? What's the weather like today? Very simple, easy things, something that a assistant is able to do. But Bixby is a artificial intelligence where you can give it commands, where you can say, hey, Bixby, uh, movie mode. And when you say that, oh, and actually my phone listened. Uh, and so actually when you say that, it'll probably turn the screen brightness down to maybe 10%. It'll put your phone to do not disturb. It could put it on silent. So it does multiple things. You're commanding your phone to do something that Google and Siri is not able to do. So all in all, that is really what Bixby is. It's just something else that Samsung wanted to create, uh, something that's another artificial intelligence. Um, because you know, you have Apple that has Siri, you have Google that has, or I should say Android that has Google, but you have Samsung that also wants one as well too, and then they called it Bixby. So I hope that you guys have liked these questions. Make sure you guys write more and more and more of these. I'll answer more of these at the end of all my videos, starting from here on out. Um, I think it's really fun to connect with you guys, answer your questions, not only through YouTube itself, through the application, but also through video. So other than that, if you guys like this video, make sure you guys give this thing a huge thumbs up. Also, don't forget to hit on subscribe. You can subscribe with that little red circle on the very bottom left-hand side. Share this video with your friends and family and social media sites, and I'll see you guys later.